House Leader, third party. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. And while the two old parties debate on where the chair should go while they drive the Titanic full speed, we'll turn to something else right now. Over a year ago, I asked the Attorney General. Over a year. Oh, and I'll remind every member of this House there's still an opportunity to vote against this bill. Oh, we're, we don't want to be in the debate about the chairs, but we can vote against the bill every time. Over a year ago, I asked the Attorney General, Honourable Speaker, for more information. Members, members I, I noticed that the entire back side of the gallery cleared out after the last question exercise. So I'm, my worry is that the rest of the gallery is going to clear out too. So perhaps we could be respectful when somebody's asking a question. Thank Proceed. you, Honorable Speaker. Over a year ago, I asked the Attorney General for more information on the extent of money laundering happening in the province. I asked about how this illicit money was being generated by the fentanyl crisis and being parked in real estate. Yesterday, we discovered we, that the U.S. Department of State has now listed Canada as a major money laundering jurisdiction. Our country was also designated as a major precursor country for illicit narcotics and a source country for fentanyl. The Wild West, indeed. Since 2016, over 8,000 Canadians have died from opioid-related overdose deaths, thousands of overdose deaths, a housing crisis with billions in laundered money. It's all linked with Vancouver at its centre. The Attorney General said last week that a big piece of the public inquiry would be to determine if the decisions that augmented this crisis were, quote, simple incompetence, willful blindness, or whether, in fact, it was corruption. My question is for you, Honourable Speakers, to the Attorney General. We've heard for months and months that a public inquiry is a maybe, but as we learn more and more, it becomes harder and harder for this government to sit on the fence. What is the timeline for the government to decide if a public inquiry is indeed warranted? Attorney General. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Honourable Speaker. <laughs> and I thank the member for the question. Uh, the member knows that uh, we hired Peter German. He's been out there doing phase two of uh, work focused on real estate, luxury cars, and horse racing. Uh, we'll be getting that information out to the public as soon as we can. The reason, uh, in part, we commissioned that report was so the public would know uh, what was going on, and so the members of this place would also know if they don't already. Um, the second uh, piece that the member asks about is in relation to political accountability in a public inquiry. And, and I'll, I'll note uh, simply that we have written now uh, uh, multiple times the member for Abbotsford West asking for the opposition to disclose to the government confidentially uh, the work that they did when they were in government on anti-money laundering. We heard from the member for Langley East that they did a great deal of, of really important work. Uh, we're having trouble finding it, uh, honourable member. So we're hopeful that they will waive the privilege and allow us to review those documents confidentially so we can build on that very important work that they tell us that they've done. I don't know why, uh, but the member for Abbotsford West has stopped re replying to our correspondence. House Leader, third party on a supplemental. Thank you, Honourable Speaker, and thank you to the Minister for his response. Let's hope that we can have a collaborative approach to this very serious problem in our province. Sam Cooper, the journalist who has been a leading force behind the exposure of the money laundering scene in the province, has stated that in Vancouver, approximately 50 per cent of the most expensive luxury real estate is owned by non-transparent structures like shell companies. Often the owners on paper are the stay-at-home parents or students, people whose reported income couldn't possibly support the ownership of 20 or 30 million dollar homes. Statistics like this shed light on the urgent need for better, to better understand the potential connection between money laundering and real estate. I appreciate that the Minister of Finance has introduced Bill 23, which is meant to increase transparency of, transparency of land ownership, but it will not answer the many questions about how we got to this terrible place. The Attorney General now has two reports in front of him that were designed to look directly into the real estate money, money laundering connection. British Columbians have waited a long time for answers on this. My question for you, Honourable Speaker, is to the Attorney General. Since we don't have clarity yet on a public inquiry, can the Attorney General provide a timeline on when he will be commenting on these reports and what they contain? 
Attorney General. Uh, thank you, uh, Honourable Speaker. Just before I, I get into that uh, timeline, might I just take a moment to reflect on the amazing work of the Finance Minister of the British Columbia, uh, who introduced two bills yesterday that are literally going to transform law enforcement and tax <laughs> authority. transform law enforcement and tax authorities' ability to see who owns real estate in our province, who actually owns it, and how they paid for it. It is transformational, and I thank her very much for that work. On the issue of the release of the reports, the process is uh, staff go through the reports. They identify individuals who have been specifically named in the report. Uh, those individuals are given an opportunity to respond and explain. Uh, this helps mitigate uh, potential defamation risk, for example. We also make sure that we're not compromising any active law enforcement investigations. It is a bit of a time-intensive process. However, now the member for Langley East, again, the one who called the RCMP to yell at them about reporting money laundering in the casinos that we know was actually happening. <laughs> to hear an apology from that member for getting that RCMP member disciplined who had the courage to speak out about a problem in our province. He owes that officer an apology. Now, so it's a, it's a bit of a time-involved process. We will get there, honourable member. One of the main reasons we commissioned these reports was to let the public know what's going on in this province. Thank you.